okay, we are back with the laptop. This feels like investigative professional, Anna. <laughs> but I got my colours done and I want to talk about it. Also, apologies for the mic here, but last time we filmed with the mic, I had it on my lapel and the lapel flopped in and the sound was kind of ruined for the whole video. So I'm going to try my best to speak clearly and not raise my voice too much. And hopefully this sound is okay. Um, but I got my colours done and I'm desperate to talk about it. So let's do that. I feel like having your colours done, it feels very... 80s Tupperware party, but it's having a revival. Like you've seen the filters on TikTok where you put your little face in the middle and then all the colors go around you and it tells you if you're a spring or a summer or an autumn or a winter. I've done it so many times and I feel like whenever I do it, I get every single response <laughs> under the sun. And it's really tricky to tell online in those filters. As I've learned, there are many factors that come into play. And although it can be done online, it's totally doable. It's definitely one of those things that benefits from in-person with a professional who like really knows what they're looking for. So what is color analysis? Like I mentioned, you've seen the TikTok filters, but it's basically using color theory to work out what colors look best on you and at best meaning what colors make you glow what makes your face light up and like doesn't cast any shadows on your face what just makes you look really healthy like if this color is next to your face it's making you look like the best version of yourself without a scrap of makeup on your best colors are going to complement your hair color your eye color and generally yeah you, you're gonna look fab <laughs> now here's where it gets slightly confusing the colors are broken down into seasons spring through to winter but then each of those seasons are all into three separate categories some people just work within those four seasons but a lot of people work within the 12 seasons. I've written this down because I was a bit confused by this. <laughs> so say you're an autumn, you could be a dark autumn, or you could be a true autumn. This is also sometimes known as a warm autumn, or you could be a soft autumn, which is also known as a light autumn. Winter and summer are the cooler palettes, so those colors have more of a blue tone to them, whereas spring and autumn, yep, got that right, are the warmer palettes, and they have more of a yellow tone to them. So why did I wanna do it? I feel like the answer to this question is, like two, maybe threefold. Number one, I wanted to know what colors looked good on me because you know, you know, you know. <laughs> we like very neutral colors around these parts. Um, so I thought that knowing what bolder colors, you know, like reds, purples, blues, greens, like colors that I never really wear from those palettes, like what, what would look best on me would give me the confidence to maybe experiment a little bit more. I'm not saying I'm gonna like add a load of red to my wardrobe straight away, but there might be occasions where I fancy something a bit more colorful. Um, so I kind of wanted that extra bit of confidence, I guess. Also from just a knowledge point of view, I really wanted to know what my best neutral colors were. I live in neutral colors. I wear a lot of neutral colors. And again, that was something that I just thought I'm intrigued to know. And then I just love personal style. I'm very much into this journey at the moment. I've done the styling sessions. I've read the books. I write a Substack on it. Like I'm just very into this at the moment. So it was more of that like knowledge is power. Let's like dig a bit deeper into this. I feel like there is, there's more to know here. And as someone who doesn't experiment with color, may maybe I want to in the future occasionally. The process is different depending on who you use. Like I said, this process can be done online and the lady that I went to go see does offer them online and kind of showed me how that she did it. But in person is preferable if there is someone local to you who does it. Um, I found Jo because she actually commented on the TikTok that I did um, where I was like, what, what palette am I? And she messaged and said, I think I can help you with this. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Went on her website, booked a session. Um, and she was like, I never thought you'd see the comment. I was like, hon, you were local. She's bright and based, which is obviously super handy for me. So her process was a phone consultation before, um, and then I like filled out a Google form, like just a questionnaire, um, which I guess if you didn't fill out, some people might not do that. It's kind of the preamble to the actual appointment. You'd probably chat through the answers to those questions before you did your session. Um, but that was really interesting because that was like, what colors are you naturally drawn to? Are there any colors that you really dislike? What color do you wear the most? Just so she could get an idea of like, where I was at. Then it was a 90 minute in-person appointment. And then post appointment, she's sent me back like a big feedback form with like all of my colors and all of her findings um, and like all the online color swatches. But she will also order like, an, like a fabric little swatch for me, um, which I think I'm gonna do just cause I think it'd be really fun to like have my own little swatch. And if I'm out shopping or like ordering things and I can be like, oh, is that, 
Is that one of my colors? So that was her process. I will link her down below. I've literally just paid her invoice and it was 195 pounds. So I'll link her down below. Always here for supporting local business women, love that. So the appointment itself, I would say there was just a, like a lot of knowledge, like knowledge overload. I filmed a lot of our session just for this video and like content purposes, um, but I wouldn't say it's like a bad thing to film it yourself on your phone, um, or at least maybe record it. Um, if the person is obviously cool with that. I just feel like there was so much information before we even got to the draping, which is like the main part of the session. Me and Joe spoke for like a good half an hour, like talking through the different color wheels, like talking about like what she was looking for in me and my features and my coloring to work out um, what season I would be. Like, I don't know, it was really, really fascinating. I genuinely wanted to take notes and was really, really happy that I filmed it. So maybe, yeah, take a pen and paper with you, <laughs> write some notes on your phone, I'm sure the person won't be offended and yeah I would recommend definitely taking photos and consider filming it because I just feel like there was there was a lot to learn from it and I would say there's not like an easy kind of oh you've got blonde hair so you're a summer there was there were so many things that Joe was looking at in me to take into consideration it was my skin tone it's the color of my veins it's my eye color it's like how my features sit on my face are they soft is there high contrast there was like all of these different factors that I'm sure to like the untrained eye, I just would have been like, I'm, I don't know. I mean, even all those filters and all the times that I've done it on TikTok, I still went into this appointment feeling completely a bit confused by the whole thing, to be honest with you. And like, I, I couldn't have predicted, it couldn't have been like, I'm so a winter. Like I, I didn't have that feeling. And that's because there is just so much to take on board. And yeah, it's so much more than like, oh, your hair color's this, your eye color's that, so you're a this. There was a lot of factors taken into consideration. So we had a chat and then we got to draping. Now this is the fun part. And this is probably the part that you've seen online and been like, what, what is going on here? <laughs> this is probably what you're thinking of when you think of color analysis though. I'm sure you've seen this. You sit down and they put a white bib on you. Um, also worth noting, um, they say to wear either barely any makeup to the appointment or like wipe your makeup off when you get there. I just went bare faced because they, they really want to do this with like your natural tones um as so yeah they put the white bib on you and you sit there and then the draping starts so we went through the colors of the rainbow first i think we did red as the first one i can't remember um but basically joe then started layering up all of these red drapes which is just like big pieces of fabric in different colors sort of under my face and it was really interesting some of the, some of them straight away you were like oh no this makes me look utterly terrible and then others you're a bit like hmm I don't know about this, like maybe, but she really liked kind of layering them all up and then peeling them away like an onion. And ones that you thought, oh, this was quite nice. When you saw the ones that actually really truly did suit me, uh, we were like, oh yeah, no, no, this, this one's a no. <laughs> it's really a process of elimination thing and like trying them all. So because it was for the first color, we tried like every single one. And then as we like worked through the different colors and Joe had kind of worked out what she thought I was, we were then able to like refine it a bit, but we did all the colors of the rainbow first. Um, I found my best blue, my best green, my best yellow, my best purple. It was really, really fun. Even Oh yeah, I think there was an orange, actually. I really liked that and I was really excited by that because that was part of the appointment. I was like, oh, I feel like we're nailing this. Like knowing what those colors are that are gonna make me just feel great when I wear them. And I looked at this like, she laid it out all nice. And I was like, I actually really like all of those colors. Like I could genuinely see me wearing all of those colors. Maybe not the salmon pink. I just don't think I'm a salmon pink girl. And I think there might've been a purple. Maybe not those, but it's like all of the others, maybe in like a wedding guest dress or a bikini when I'm abroad or like something like that. I don't know. I, I just looked and I was like, I actually really like all these colors. So that was good. <laughs> oh, and then we worked on my neutral palette. So we went through browns, creams, khakis, navies, rusts. Um, and that was also really fun because again, I was like this, this is really what I wanted to narrow down. Like what is the neutral palette that works best for me? And then what is the more like colorful rainbow style palette that also works for me. So it was really fun. We just got all of those colors down. She laid them all out. And from the draping, we knew that they worked really well with my coloring. Um, and we took a couple of photos. Like I sat there and like wore them like a sash. Like it was, it was just really 
I actually really enjoyed myself. I had a great 90 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, brief pause there because I just had a phone interview for Architectural Digest DIY about our wedding. I feel like it's so funny, the things that I get interviewed about. I'm still interviewed and asked questions about our wedding. What is it, like eight, eight years ago? Okay, seven, seven years ago? Oh, I've lost count. Anyway, the findings, that's what you're here for. The findings, what did I find out? So Joe summarized, I'm a warm undertone with soft features and I'm not high contrast. Warm means that I have yellowy toes to my skin, but I would say I'm quite pinky, but my veins are quite green and like the rest of my features are warm. So it's like a bit of a tricky one. I'm kind of, I'm more like red in my skin. I'm kind of red with a bit of like sallowness <laughs> to my skin, I guess. Um, so she was like, no, you're a warm undertone, which makes me, drum roll please, a true autumn. So my perfect color palette is rich, muted, and warm. Let's have a little look at my best colors. So if we're going through the rainbow, I suit like a bright red orange. So all of my Mac Morange days, or like what's another one I used to wear? Was it called like Red Square, like Nas Red Square? I've always liked more of an orangey red on me um, rather than a bluey red. So. I was right all along, there you go. Um, that's a really good color for me, as is like a warm terracotta orange. We tried so many pinks on me, and oh God, like a pastel pink, oh, looked terrible on me. It's more of a salmon, kind of deep peach. Um, you know, like the Pantone color of the year, a bit like that, but it needs more richness. That's the thing I'm always looking for, a color that is warm, but kind of deep, it has that like depth to it. Pale colors are not the one on me, and colors that have that richness to it too. It's almost like one of those things, it's quite, it's like hard to describe, but you know it when you see it, and you look at all these colors and you go, oh yeah, that is a warm, deep, rich green <laughs> for example like the moss green oh, i love that color anyway like a dark olive green if i'm going to do turquoise which i'm not sure like turquoise is a color that i personally love but like it's that kind of it needs that depth of color to it um teal blue do you really like that and like this muted violet interestingly this feels like a very tibby ish color if you're familiar with the tibby color wheel but yeah this muted kind of dirty um lilac my best neutrals are all colors they're all colors that i absolutely love they're colors i absolutely love um a dark chocolate brown like a coffee a mahogany camel oh thank god <laughs> a warm beige um kind of natural beige ivory and this medium bronze like khaki color um joe had a swatch and i was like oh my word i need a trench coat in that color, it's perfect, I love it. It's basically the color of my eyes, like mirroring that color. I loved it so much. <laughs> there is more good news. Um, gold is good, gold is good. Gold, copper, bronze, those are the colors of jewelry that I should be looking for. I wiped a bead of sweat off of my brow there because if you have seen my Missima, um like jewelry case, it's full to the brim <laughs> of gold. <laughs> So I was kind of worried about that one, but luckily gold is good. Gold is really, really good. Um, but there is some sad news. Black, not good. I'm pretty sure that black is in the winter palette. And I think if you're winter, I think silver looks best on you. Cause I think I'd put something up that said, I just, I just really want to wear gold earrings and, and black jumpers. <laughs> and someone was like, sadly, they're not in the same color family. So if gold suits you, black isn't going to suit you. If black suits you, gold isn't going to be the best um, metal for you. Um, so the sad news is that black isn't really my color. But I feel like we'll get to, no, you know what? We'll get to that in a minute. We will revisit that in a minute. Um, colors uh, to go for instead of black, charcoal, navy, coffee. They're my best neutrals. Like creams and kind of warm greys and warm ivories are better for me than a stark, like really true, true white. Um, and the colors to avoid, all the colors to avoid, it was really, really interesting because I'm like, when Joe put any of these colors up to my face, I just looked sick they made me look gray anything that is pastel pastel is not for me not my color and also anything that's really neon or really bright it's just gonna compete with my dark hair and compete with my features and not it's not good it's not good it's just gonna look too harsh against my skin tone so how will i use this going forward joe mentioned how she loves to do the questionnaire before because she said it just gives her a good read on the person on their taste and what they like like helps her round out the individual before you walk through the door but there is something quite interesting in this that even if you might not necessarily know 
your best colors or you just might feel kind of in between when you try something on i do feel like you kind of know things that don't suit you sometimes it's easier to go down that route and she was like you will naturally gravitate in the clothes that you wear in the jewelry that you wear in like how you decorate your home all of those sorts of things she's like you will naturally gravitate to things that suit you because that you just do <laughs> so it's funny because pastels will look incredible on some people but i have not been a pastel wearer since i went to a steps concert when i was 10 you know and bought something from did anyone ever buy stuff from idk and debenhams like aside from tammy girl that was like my favorite spot like i had a i had a khaki gilet there you go khaki good color for me but underneath i had a pale icy blue um three-quarter length top I remember <laughs> i remember what i wore to be fair it was my first ever concert okay but i haven't worn it since and that is because i kind of i knew that pastel colors um looked kind of terrible on me even down to the type of leopard print that i like i don't like a pale leopard print i always like a leopard print to be quite brown and orangey and deep and rich and feel like an autumnal leopard print rather than something that's kind of pale and more gray um so yeah it's kind of interesting that i've naturally gravitated towards these things already however we have black we have black and like if you've seen my wearing color wheel you'll know that well over one third of my wardrobe is black and i'm not going to change that anytime soon this is the thing with getting your colors done it is not a list of strict rules to follow it's not like right you are never wearing these colors ever again maybe i would have done this and i would have been a really big fan of baby blue i still would have worn baby blue i've done this i know that black isn't for me i am still going to wear black i think the learn for me is that say it's a no makeup day and i've got other options in my wardrobe am i going to reach for black super super close to my face maybe not and that is what this has taught me is i'm going to feel so much better if i wore a khaki scarf or a camel and the weird thing with black is I so rarely film in black. You will so rarely see me in black in one of these videos because it's like, oh my God, it's, it's so funny. I've been doing it for like all these years. The amount of times I'm like wearing something black and I'm about to film a video and I'll be like, oh, just go change. I will always go change into like a brown or a white, like, I mean, white on camera, white just translates so well when you're wearing it. Um, so it's funny. I would never really wear black on camera because it would make me look gray and washed out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> So maybe it's just going to shift, it's early days, I haven't like really fully tested this theory yet, but maybe it's just going to shift how I feel about wearing black, especially on days where I haven't got a scrap of makeup on and I want to feel my best, you know? Jay was saying maybe it's that you wear something with like a deeper neckline or you wear a big chunky gold jewellery, like just something to break it up or maybe you're doing like the layering trick with a t-shirt underneath in a colour that really complements your skin tone, like there's so many ways to break it up or maybe you take this knowledge and you're like, I don't care, <laughs> I'm still wearing black exactly the same as I did before. I just think it's kind of interesting knowledge to know. I feel like it's really handy to know my neutrals. Um, I really loved brown in the last year, like this sort of color that's got like quite a greeny tone to it. Um, it's a good color for me and I do feel really good when I wear it. Um, so I feel like it's kind of handy to know my neutral palette, but also really handy to know those bolder, brighter colors that do work for me. I don't think I'm going to be incorporating them on a daily basis, but it has got me thinking about, I've got like a Rixo um, summer dress upstairs in, in like a kind of, it is to be fair, like a buttery yellow, which probably isn't one of the best colors for me. And I'm like, oh, do I go and dye it into one of my, like into a really nice deep green or like a bright red? Cause that to me is a like wedding guest dress. I don't know. It, it's made me want to switch a few things up. You know, when you just want to feel your best, you want to feel like completely like top of your game. I feel like I've got a palette that I can look at. And if I'm like renting something, I can almost narrow it down and be like, oh, I want to look at something in this color family. Um, it's made me excited for like in particular, let me go back to those. Maybe incorporating that red, possibly the mustard, the olive green, the moss green. I feel like there's something that could be done there. I feel like these are all tones that could be incorporated into my wardrobe in a fun way and in a way that where things still feel like me. And I do feel like it will inform my purchases going forward. I don't know. It feels like I can be a bit smarter going forward. To more, more in the sense of, do I need to buy anything else that's black? 
probably not. <laughs> I've got so much black in my wardrobe already. I've got the black jumper. I've got the black coat. I've got the little black dress. Like I've got so much black. It's making me think about my wish list and say if there's a trench coat on my wish list, maybe it could be a green trench coat. I know, pushing the boat out here. <laughs> but it's made me think that I probably don't need any more black in my wardrobe. These are famous last words, aren't they? They're going to come back to haunt me. <laughs> I feel like it's given me the confidence to experiment a bit with future things that are coming in. So the conclusion, is this worth it? This feels to me very much like supplementary reading, additional homework. This is not the step one. If you're, at your, if you're at the beginning of your personal style journey, I'd say, you know, Alison Bornstein's book is wonderful. A personal styling session with her. Oh my gosh, even better, incredible. <laughs> Top tier right there. Maybe you subscribe to some sub stacks that you like. You know, you're saving things on Instagram, on TikTok. You're watching videos on here. I really like Alison's videos on here, actually, they're really good as well. <laughs> I find them a really good starting point. But say you're well into the journey, you've done all those things, you've ticked all the boxes and you're looking for like it to level up. I'd say this is a good tool for that. More just like the knowledge. I'm very here for like knowledge is power, things like this, things like doing the one-on-one -on -one session with Alison, taking everything I've learned from taking a selfie every single day, like taking all of these things all together, I feel like it's just gonna improve my style even more going forward. Um, but yeah, I would say it's, it's additional homework. It's, it's expensive, but also most of the time you're gonna be supporting a local business person in your neighborhood, and that is amazing. Overall, I'm really pleased that I've done it. I am so chuffed <laughs> with my color palette. And I think it's gonna be really helpful going forward, and who knows, it's 2024, the year where I buy something in my wardrobe that isn't camel black, navy cream or denim maybe anyway i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching i will pop the link to joe in the description box for you she was brilliant and any other sources from this video will be linked down below as well but i hope you enjoyed this have a great rest of your week thank you for checking in oh subscribe if you've watched this and you're not subscribed do a little cheeky mm. I'm doing more videos now. We're going old school on here. There'll be more to come. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss them. And I'll see you soon with a brand new video. Bye.